My guest today is Tracy McBride. She is a Northeast Ohio wardrobe styling and image coach for your closet, author of two books, Mastering Your Evolving Style, 30-Day Wardrobe Planning Journal, and You Do You With Style. She's a TV show host and volunteer at organizations like Dress for Success. We've got a lot to learn from Tracy. Welcome to the Sort of Success podcast, Grow Your Business with Speaking. And today I am so thrilled that I have image consultant extraordinaire and one of the best marketers that I know, Tracy McBride, on with me. She's got lots of great insights for us. Welcome to the podcast, Tracy. Hi, Pat. Thanks for having me. Yes, I have seen you speak several times and you are so good at it. What do you think it takes to be a really good, authentic speaker? Something my sister tells me all the time because she's my biggest critic and she will say it's because being authentic. Mm -hmm. I am what I am. I'm certainly not perfect and I don't expect perfection from others. I just doing our best and being real with the challenges we all deal with in what I'm speaking about. Yes. And so you also have a TV show, right? Yes, I do, which is a little bit off because of coronavirus, so I haven't been able to tape it in a while, but yes, I have, it's more, I've been using it as a platform to give out management wardrobe tips, and I've been posting those in, you know, all over social uh, media platforms, and they're just short little videos that I post through YouTube. Yeah, excellent. That's great. So tell us about getting clients. How do you get clients using speaking? Uh, I many times I'm invited to talk to, um, you know, nonprofit organizations. I'm invited by uh, different banks. A lot of banks will have networking groups within their companies and they have budgets to hire speakers to come in and talk about various topics. Mm -hmm. And I always love that because uh, the audience is, you know, looking, it's a wide variety and different levels that they're working within a company. But typically, um, I'm invited to come in and maybe talk for a half hour or for um, something like a, a networking thing. It, it many times is a workshop of 45 minutes, an hour, sometimes longer. Mm -hmm. And I find from that, other people go, oh, I know, I belong to another organization, and we need your message there too. So it kind of just takes off on its own. Yes, yeah, so, so you get a lot of speaking engagements just organically by people hearing you and then wanting you to go somewhere else that they're a part of. Exactly, and many times my clients are in different positions. They sit on boards or they uh, are belong to their different organizations within their cities and their companies. And, you know, they're like, Tracy, I want to, you know, kind of share you with more people. So while I'm just in their closet, they want to take me and invite me to something so I can have a bigger platform and talk to their coworkers because they see that their coworkers need help. <laughs> That's perfect. So <laughs> how do you turn those speaking engagements into clients? Uh, I do a couple of things. I, I find that there will be the people in the audience who don't see themselves uh, represented in my message, mm -hmm. um, but they can see everybody around them that needs help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so sometimes people, um, they don't think it's them and they just not seeing that, but they could go, oh, Tracy, you need help to help my friend over there and my friend over there. And, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, okay, <laughs> so what can I do for you? do you? Are you having any struggles or frustrations in your closet? So, and, and I also find people will want to hire me to fix their sister or their mother. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's the person that's receiving, I, I did learn early on when I started my business to say, listen, does your sister or your mom want help? Is this something they've said to you or is this something you want for them? And if it's not something that they want for themselves, uh, I just, I don't want to be that gift. Yeah. I do find that I am a gift that many women have given to themselves. Like they'll say, my 40th birthday is coming up and you are a gift I'm buying for myself. 
Okay. Or 50th birthday. I have spent actual birthdays of 50 or 40 in the person's closet on their real birthday because they took the day off and they said, I'm doing this. So, <laughs> I'm a gift to themselves or a gift to someone as long as that person wants that gift. Yeah, yeah, that is really great. So when you're doing your speaking engagements, how do you collect email addresses from the audience members? Um, I do it a couple of ways because, you know, everybody has to opt in now. You can't just collect things. Yeah. So I do pass around. I do one old school and I do new, new school. Okay. So I tell people, obviously, they can, you know, just go onto my website and sign up for my newsletter. Some people are active and do that right away on the spot. Um, others, they take your print collateral, which I'm a big fan of having great branding print collateral that they can take with them and then they sign up later. I also pass around a clipboard while I'm speaking. And in the early days, I didn't think that it would stop at a table and not get moved. So, <laughs> and I learned the hard way yeah. that I asked somebody in the audience, maybe someone I know or that the organizer and say, could you make sure that this gets moved to every table? Yeah. So anybody that's opting in, I rather have it in their handwriting that, their email and yes, and they will check a question. Do you want a complimentary style conversation with you with Tracy later? Um, and they can check that or if they just want the newsletter. So there's some options on it. And then I get that back and hopefully I pray that I can read everything. <laughs> I know, get back to the fun. office <laughs> and put all that into the, you know, the program, which I use constant contact. Yes. And so then do you follow up specifically with those people or do they just go on your newsletter list? Uh, no, I do follow up specifically. I will send something out, rehash maybe in the, te you know, the heading where I met you. I just, you know, met you at da, 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 whatever the event was. And so that it's a warm opening and they go, oh yeah, I remember that. And then I might make an offer or reiterate an offer that I might have made that night um, that would be just to that particular group and, you know, put some sort of a deadline on it. So it's not like forever, call me in a year. It's more like, you know, call me the next whatever, two weeks, whatever I decide at that time and, yeah. and then see where it takes me from there. But I do find that if you made an offer, I teach so, and talk about so much that people don't always hear that. They, they're like over here remembering what I just said and they're, it's rolling around in their head. So they might miss the next six sentences. So I reiterate, I find that when we just repeat, they'll catch it somewhere along the line and then they reach out to you. Yeah. And about what percent of people mark that they want a consultation? I would say if it's a room of say 50 people, I would get at least um, 30 to 40 that want the newsletter and then there'll be about 20 that want or 25 sometimes it depends on that want to have yes a, a phone call yeah. do they always answer the phone or return my message not always sometimes it's the excitement in the moment but then they get scared and and that's okay you know it's this is such an intimate service that i offer that it's i don't want them to pull the trigger till they're ready because you yeah. really it's a deep dive, a little bit of a deep dive, what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say about 20% of the people who say they want a free consultation actually answer their phone and schedule with you? I would say it's a little higher than that. Mm -hmm. But I will say that once I have the call with them, that I have like a 90% Yes, I'm ready. So yeah. you see, it's getting to the coming to the event, learning and hearing things. Sometimes they're ready to act right away, and others that are like, "Whoa, wait a minute, let me think about this," because it is so intimate, and they have to really think about it. And I really believe that through all of the way the platforms that I talk, my blog, my newsletter, that which is very visual and teaching, mm -hmm. um, my my tips on you know LinkedIn and all those places, the video. It's a way for them to get to know me. Mm -hmm. And if they like what they hear, they feel comfortable with me, and they know that they're not going to be judged, that's when they say, let's set the phone call up. And then I always, rarely do they not do anything. Yes. If anything, it's, it, it will be money. But, you know, we can blame money on, you know, lack of money on a lot of things <laughs> not, that we don't do. <laughs> you know, coaching and all the other things that we I know. need. 
I so found that same thing. So, uh, yes, so that was really, really good. So I think a great takeaway is that as you nurture people in all these different ways, your newsletter, your videos, your social media, that they start to feel comfortable with you. And I don't think it's just you. I think it's anybody who offers a service when someone doesn't really know them yet. Giving them right. Oh, I agree. You know, you meet somebody the first time. I have had situations where I talked and the person stood up, said, I need you. Here's my card. When can we talk? We set the appointment up right then. We talk and it's like I'm in her closet within a short period of time. And, and, and that happens. But most people, it's let me watch you for a little while and decide if this is, you know, the way I want to go. And another way, too, is my book. You know, if somebody is like hesitant and maybe their budget can't afford me right now. Um, take my book. My book, I share exactly what I do with clients. Now, I'm standing next to them. I'm helping them. Yeah. Um, sometimes women, if, if they're 40, 50, 60, 70, and they haven't figured it out at that age, they really need somebody standing next to them because... <laughs> You fall down, right? You start step one and then you let six months go by and then you might do step two. I have six steps. I share them. Most women will do a few of them. Most women won't do all of them on their own. Yeah. So they need that coach. And that's really what I am, a coach in the closet. Yeah. Hey, I love that. <laughs> what a great tagline. <laughs> Is there anything else that you think our audience needs to know about building their business using speaking? Yeah, yes, and um, I've noticed, seen that in NABO too, where different people at different points have figured out, hey, I'm just going to put a blast out there, tell the people who already know me and love me, and say, who do you know where I could go speak? Mm -hmm. Whether it's for free or it's a, a small fee because they want to get their feet wet, so to speak. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes it's, when I started off, it, it, many times it was, you know, just a, a $50 gift card. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you're, you know, but you got your message out and then you met more people than talking one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, podcasts are growing is what obviously you figured out mm -hmm. and doing more podcasts. So people hear your voice because there's so much energy in our voices mm -hmm. and people are picking up on that. And my sister for years has been telling me to do a podcast, do a podcast. And all of a sudden, I've been invited to be on podcasts like yours and another one that just actually I got the link for yesterday mm -hmm. that people feel and hear energy. And there are a lot of people who love podcasts while they're driving and whatnot. Lord and God. it's more of a positive way to feed your brain, especially mm -hmm. with all the negative news that's out there right now. Yeah. So I think podcasts, what you're doing the um, converse, having conversations and get asking your friends, who do you know that's in a group or an organization that would like to hear a message of what I have? Mm -hmm. And it's a good way to um, share your book if you have one, I happen to. And um, that is a, another tool for people to get to know you a little deeper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. So one thing I always ask everybody who's on this podcast with me is what are three traits that you think people have to have in order to be good at using speaking to grow their business? Mm, have to be organized. Okay. You know, organized and have your, um, what you call the, um, your signature or you know, speak, speeches, like uh, yeah. at least a couple. I have two, mm -hmm. um, but you can have more. And, and have that ready, at the ready, a uh, speaker one sheet, um, but traits that personally would be being organized, um, being flexible and able to move with the punches, so to speak, mm -hmm. because things unexpectedly come up, you know, like um, technology doesn't work and stuff like that. And if you get really flustered and you start swearing in the front of the room because <laughs> something won't work, yeah, that probably won't put out a great impression, right? So you got to be flexible. You have to have, um, you know, tenacity to follow up. That's mm -hmm. huge, right? Yeah. It's, it's just, you have those names. They're not going to do anything for you if you don't make the phone call. So follow through and tenacity are really the third one. Yeah, perfect. Those are fabulous. Thank you. And thanks so much for being on the call with me today. I really appreciated it. Thanks for the invite. And I'll see you soon. Hopefully in person someday soon. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to the Sort of Success Grow Your Business with Speaking weekly podcast. You can learn more about Tracy at tmcbee.com. That's T-E-E-M-C-B-E-E.com. For more information about using speaking as a marketing strategy, visit pataltvader.com.